Hi, I'm Rain, and welcome to a new series on my YouTube channel. In this series, I'll be covering lore and my personal thoughts and theories revolving around the immense amounts of lore in the Destiny universe. From the Traveler to the Darkness, to the Ways of the Hive, to landscapes, and even information regarding the Golden Age. Welcome to Destiny Lorepedia. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps out a ton. In this episode, I'll be talking about Oryx, the Taken King. A lot of us can agree that the Taken King DLC was probably one of the best DLCs to come around in the Destiny lineup, especially with how Bungie, the developer of Destiny, hyped the DLC and really got us hooked into how Oryx even got his power to take. So without delay, let's get into it. <laughs> that still gives me goosebumps. As we know, Oryx was introduced to us in the Taken King DLC. During that time, we just saw him as another boss, but clearly he had a very important role in regards to the Destiny universe and the timeline of events. He is the first of the three sisters that we have slain in the Destiny universe, with Savathun being the second sister slain in the Witch Queen DLC. We don't quite know too much about Zivu Arath, although I will mention very few things about her in this video. This is also the time in which we will learn about the Books of Sorrow, which contain verses compiled from not only Oryx himself, but also from the Worm Gods and even Oryx's sisters. It has been reported that other civilizations have also added verses into the Books of Sorrow. We will get into the connection between Oryx and the Books of Sorrow later. Oryx's early life is completely different from when it was when he invaded the solar system. Oryx's original name was Arash, the eldest out of the three sisters. Arash was the daughter of the Osmium King of Fundament, a big gas giant where her kind hid from threats. Tragedy hit when her father, the Osmium King, was murdered by Teox, who was a tutor to Arash and her sisters. While there isn't much information on how exactly Teox got away with the murder, there is heavy speculation that Teox asked the Helium Court, the Osmium Court's rival, to send Helium Drinkers to assassinate not only the Osmium King, but Arash and her sisters as well. Of course, the three sisters got away, but the Osmium King did not. Shortly after the Osmium King's assassination, Arash and her two sisters swore revenge on Teox, and this would be the beginning of a long journey for the three sisters. Taking Arash's ship, they went on a long journey to eventually build an army capable of killing Teox and her allies. However, Arash brought the Osmium King's warm familiar and had spoken to Arash about her father's final words, which was a warning that, the moons of Fundament would align and create a giant wave that would annihilate the entire race. This would change their journey's path from making an army to reaching the bottom of Fundament, where the Worm Familiar had given instructions of how to reach the bottom in order to meet the Worm Gods. Halfway down their journey to reach the bottom of Fundament, they passed by the Leviathan. As they tried to pass, it spoke to Arash and the three sisters, heeding them a warning to turn around. The three sisters declined and ignored the warning, continuing their journey down to the bottom of Fundament. After reaching the bottom of Fundament, Arash and her two sisters walked upon to the Worm Gods, who offered their larvae to the three sisters for incredible power. However, in return, they would need to feed their worms never-ending hunger, or be consumed. Of course, Arash and her two sisters accepted this offer and re-emerged as different beings, in this case, since we are talking about Oryx, we'll be focusing on the changes of names as well, in which Arash became Oryx. Starting now, I'll be referencing Arash as Oryx. After many times in which Oryx had been able to feed his worm's never-ending hunger, herself and her sisters had feared that eventually they would no longer be able to feed their worms, therefore resulting in them being consumed, as they were not able to fully satisfy the worm's hunger. Oryx then had taken herself and her two sisters into her sword world, where her throne world would be established. There, Oryx would kill both her sisters as a plan to find Akka, the Worm God of Secrets. Killing Savathun gave Oryx knowledge in regards to manipulating Akka, as well as Akka's location. 
Killing Zivu Arath gave Oryx the brute strength to potentially kill Akka, while also being able to gain Akka's secrets regarding the Deep. As many people see it, the Deep could be another term or connection to the darkness, if not the darkness itself. After successfully killing Akka, Oryx obtained the secrets of communicating with the Deep. As a result, Oryx created the Tablets of Ruin, in which Oryx had worn around his waist. After the Tablets of Ruin were made, Oryx had re-emerged as Oryx, the Taken King. From now on, I will only be referencing Oryx as Oryx. While Oryx had revived his two sisters, he also had three children. Two daughters, Ir Anuk and Ir Halak, and one son, Crota, which we are familiar with from the Dark Below DLC. While we don't know too much about Oryx's two daughters, besides their names and their idea of an oversoul to separate themselves from their deaths, we know that Crota wasn't only Oryx's son, but also was seen as a hive god. However, Crota followed in his two sisters' footsteps and tried the idea of an oversoul. This would then cause the Vex invasion into Oryx's throne world. As a way to secure his throne world and make it safe, he used the Tablets of Ruin and turned his throne world inside out, therefore giving way to the making of the Dreadnought. Oryx arrived in the solar system shortly after Crota's death at the hands of the Guardian, in which the Guardian had used Crota's sword against himself, but this only invited Oryx to finish the job that Crota had started. Oryx is met by the Awoken fleet in which a big space battle occurs. While Oryx suffers losses from the Awoken Queen's Harbingers, Oryx ultimately claims victory. Shortly after, he starts to recreate his Taken army, starting with a Cabal base on Phobos, in which the Guardian had seen firsthand of this power to take. After a plan that was made by the Vanguard, the Guardian was able to reach Oryx's Dreadnought and eventually disable the weapon on the Dreadnought, a big caved-in circle that fires an AoE blast that destroys anything in this path. This is the weapon that killed many Woken in a seed firing in the space battle cinematic. After attempting to get to Oryx and failing, Eris Morn had told the Guardian that in order to reach Oryx, they must follow the steps of his dead son. In this case, the Guardian would have to become Ascendant. In this case, the Guardian had stolen enough of Crota's essence from his tomb in order to become Ascendant and reach Oryx. Many believe that this essence is simply his soul, but as far as I am currently aware, there isn't much to definitively prove that. After becoming Ascendant, the Guardian had reached Oryx, and, of course, they battled. The Guardian wins the battle, defeating Oryx. However, Oryx is not finished. In the cutscene that plays after Oryx is defeated, we see Oryx manifesting his power to take, using his sword as a buffer as he is quite weak at this point. Here is the cutscene. After this, he proceeds to take himself, in which he just simply disappears. Many think that he died right after, but this simply is not the case. Oryx had taken himself as a way to retreat into his throne realm, which is different from his inside-out throne world. This is what would lead to the King's Fall Raid, in which we would start at the court of Oryx, and eventually we would get to see Oryx one last time at the end of the raid where we defeat and kill him once and for all. This would be the time in which Oryx is killed and his corpse to be floating out in space. To this current day, the Dreadnought still exists, although there is no real idea of its current condition or if someone or something is controlling it. Earlier, I mentioned the Books of Sorrow, and how there is a connection between them and Oryx. As we know, Oryx had worn the Tablets of Ruin around his waist, but the Books of Sorrow had much more information including the information regarding how Oryx had obtained the secrets and his power to take. 
These books would even at one point help Oryx in his conquest to feed his worm and strengthen his power. My connection may not be seen as clearly as other connections between other characters and items or other books, but the Books of Sorrow's connection to Oryx is a big connection as it helped to develop an idea into the works and minds of Savathun and Zivu Arath, as well as Oryx sharing his information on his sisters. Thank you for watching today's video. Again, if you enjoyed and may want to hear other lore-related stuff around the Destiny universe, please don't hesitate to give this video a like and consider subscribing as it helps out a ton. Thank you for watching. See you later.